The term survival of the fittest often brings to mind acts of carnage and vicious competition. And while this sort of brutality is certainly part of nature, it isn't the whole picture. Animals amongst their own often display unexpected gentleness, strong solidarity, and even a curious sort of altruism. And there are a surprising number of studies which demonstrate this sort of behavior. For example, there is a 2008 study which showed that capuchin monkeys, when given two options, are more likely to choose the one which is mutually beneficial rather than one which is selfish. Or there's the classic study from the 50s which demonstrated that a rat was less likely to retrieve food if it meant that another rat would receive an electric shock. But even better than these published studies is the illuminative example of the Mexican beaded lizard. This footage from the David Attenborough documentary Life in Cold Blood shows two of these lizards fighting over territory but it's what they're not doing that's more interesting. As David Attenborough explains, these lizards have both powerful claws and extremely poisonous bites, but instead of using them, they solve their territorial disputes by grappling. For the Mexican beaded lizard, there's no rule book, there are no laws, it has no deity to answer to, and it has no understanding of complex ethical issues. Yet neither lizard decides to cut the fight short by using its powerful and poisonous bite. And natural selection seems to be the only thing that explains the necessity of this sort of behavior. A species which is overly violent with each other is going to have trouble maintaining large population. And this built-in mechanism for survival of the population isn't just limited to the rules of engagement either. It would be careless of me to omit the example of the maternal behavior of the spectacled caiman alligators, which the documentary Life in Cold Blood was also able to capture. This adult female is guarding dozens of babies, not all of which are her own offspring. After laying their eggs, the other adults made their way back home, leaving this one female adult in charge of protecting the nursery pool. Those people who view evolution only as a harsh and grim process would have a very hard time understanding this behavior. But if you take the time to think about it, the survival of the population greatly outweighs the inconvenience of the lone adult female. This altruistic behavior provides a selective advantage in the same way that complex courtship rituals also provide a selective advantage over rape. In fact, anybody who plays first-person shooters with friends knows that using teamwork to come up with a game plan almost always works a lot better than going up by yourself and trying to accomplish all the goals alone. And in this light, we can understand the advantage of the solidarity shown in wolf packs. Now if we apply this concept of natural morality to our own human behavior, it still makes a lot of sense. Similar to the wrestling Mexican beaded lizards, we almost always resolve our disputes in our day-to-day -day lives without anybody being harmed. Like the Cayman alligators, we hold high consideration for children, even those who aren't our own. We have a very strong psychological aversion to murder, and it almost certainly comes from generations upon generations of selective pressure towards what we call morality. What seems to make humans different is our large frontal lobes, which give us the unique ability to create and enforce written laws, and to think philosophically about these matters too. When I was a freshman at my university, I used to play Catch the Flag on Friday nights with a rather large group of people and there was only one rule which governed behavior in the game, and that rule was simply stated as, don't be a douche. And interestingly, everybody pretty much understood what that meant, and consequently there were never any real problems. And my hypothesis is that it was our natural morality kicking in, which allowed us to understand what actions were and were not acceptable based on such a simple rule. So from now on, when somebody tells you that you're acting like an animal, Maybe that isn't such a bad thing.